here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. We've talked and gotten a lot of the different equipment set in place where it needs to go, but I feel like in every video I'm always telling you guys, well, I'll finish getting those cords and the wires set later. Well, today is later. I went ahead and I ordered a power strip that has 12 different outlets on it. I think I'm only going to need 10 of them, but it doesn't hurt to have a few extras just to be safe. I've also got myself some hooks so that I can hang the wires as I go along and a few zip ties and tools that I'm going to need. I want to make sure because there are so many different cords that need to be plugged in, um, cord management is a really important thing. Just one, because it looks good, but also more importantly for safety's sake. You want to make sure that you don't have any wires or cords hanging out in tanks or in areas that they could get wet and damaged and even worse you could accidentally get electrocuted so let's go ahead and get started having everything organized and looking nice and ready to go in this tank okay I've gone ahead and run the length of my um, power strip so I know how much distance I have. Initially, I thought maybe I would install it on this pull-out cabinet, but when you do that, you gotta think everything that's plugged into this also has to pull out, so I really don't want a bunch of cords going everywhere. And then I thought that maybe I would mount it back here, but there's not really a ton of space, which leaves me with the decided mounting place is going to be right here. It's not gonna be up too high, that way I can plug in a bunch of things on the top and have cords running across the top but then I can also plug things in below and have them running down there. Now something else that I haven't said but if you don't know this anytime you are um, installing things that have cords you want to make sure that there's a drip loop so that if for some reason water gets on any of them it's not going to go down this and um, into your outlet and cause all sorts of issues. Another reason that I am um, putting this up high is a safety thing too. Um, if for some crazy reason I would have water spill in the tank, I don't want a bunch of um, an outlet with a bunch of things plugged into it sitting on the ground. Again, that's all sorts of safety hazards. So right up here is where it's going to go. Okay, remember before in the previous videos, I've got my piece of tape on here again. That way I don't accidentally drill through the uh, board and into this backside. So let's go ahead and get those. All right, power strip is mounted. Now it's time to move over to the sump side and try and figure out how and where I want to mount stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with the pump. All right, now my CJ Synchro SDC comes with this little controller and on the back of it is this little magnetic piece that I can actually um, attach to the inside of the stand. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this right up in here and then everything will go from there. All right, unfortunately, it's not that easy because I still have to get this guy and all of its cord routed around into the other side of the sump, but that's where these handy dandy clips are gonna come in. As you can see, I've got my clips installed and the cables are all routed nicely together along the top back of the stand. All right, next up is to mount the heater controller. And to do that, they gave you these sticky Velcros. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and actually mount this on the sump down towards the bottom. And the reason for that is because this one doesn't have a really long cord, so I don't have a ton of options. And I'll be honest, because it's being Velcroed, I don't know how comfortable I feel about having that hang up over the sump. So it's gonna go a little bit lower.
All right, I was about to move on and get the skimmer cord organized, but I remembered one of the things that I wanted to do. And right now I'm just going to use a piece of tape and write what it is that I'm plugging in. I've got an idea for some fun creative tags, but those are still on order. So I'll show you the final product, but one thing in all the years that I've done service and maintenance is having labels on everything that's plugged in on the off chance that you are not the one that has to unplug it. Whoever it is, even if it's you and you're in a rush, you know exactly which one to unplug. You don't have to spend time tracing cords. All right, as you can see, I have run the cord for the skimmer. I followed along the same path that I used for the return pump, but instead of zip tying that whole bundle together, I went ahead and twisty tied the skimmer to that bundle of return pumps in case I ever have to remove it. I don't have to cut a bunch of zip ties. Now that I've gotten everything in the sump connected and all of those wires run, I'm going to move up to the top of the tank and get wires run for the lights and for the wave makers. All right, I have already gone ahead and installed the reef waves. Well, not installed them, but placed them in the tanks so that I could run the wires for them. But I realized that I hadn't really talked about them kind of like I've talked about all of the other products. So here we go. This is the box that they come in. These guys are pretty cool. They have um, a whole bunch of different modes. And well, when I say modes, I mean different wave patterns that you can program for them to make. You can place them in different areas on the tank. So you could place them on the back or you could place them on the sides. And depending where you place them, it's going to create different wave patterns within your tank. Now, something that's interesting about these guys in comparison to all of the other products, one, you can control it with the reef beat, but you don't have to control it with the reef beat. It actually comes with a controller that I'm gonna be mounting um, in the stand, and you can control these guys with this as well as the reef beat app. Now I know, again, I've talked about the reef beat app a lot, and I haven't shown you a video, but I promise there is one coming where we connect everything to the app so that you can see how it's all done. So let's go ahead and get these mounted. All right, everything is hooked up. The wires are all nice and organized. I gotta say, it looks good. I hate looking into tanks and there being like cords and wires everywhere. So I'm happy with the way it looks. The only thing that's not in there right now is my grounding probe because it is on order. But as soon as that shows up, I'll go ahead and get it um, plugged in and where it's supposed to be. So I think that pretty much wraps up everything for this video. If you have any questions about anything I've done today or you know where to find the stuff, feel free to leave a comment below. You can always ask saltwateraquarium.com or you can reach out to Red Sea as well. They've got a fantastic fantastic Facebook group, and they're always happy to help. All right, this has been Hillary for Waterlogged. On behalf of saltwateraquarium.com, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.